Hey everybody, I uh, wanted to do an episode on academic writing on the command line. It's something I've been doing more and more lately, and I've tried a few uh, GUI citation managers like Zotero or Mendeley, but I really have uh, been wanting to break away from them and just use Vim and Bash and command line tools that I normally use. So I wanted to share with you how I solved that problem for myself. I keep all my research projects in a research directory. I'm going to focus on this one today, it's a project I've been working on recently. And as you can see inside, there's uh, several subdirectories. Um, there's an articles directory that just contains a bunch of PDFs of articles I might want to cite in my project. Um, I have an abstract file, some a data folder with some CSV data and an image folder with some images that I might want to reference in my presentation or paper. So I'm going to focus on this articles uh, subdirectory here, which has just a list of PDFs. And uh, the main use of Zotero or Mendeley for me was really getting citations out of it. Um, so I wanted an easier way to get uh, citations for these articles so I could include them in my papers. So one of the easiest ways to do this is if the article has a DOI or digital object identifier, um, for instance, I think this one has listed a DOI or digital object identifier. Um, this identifier is uniquely tied to this article. And uh, if an article has a DOI, that means that you can find it even if they change the link to it later, so long as the uh, owner updates the DOI's reference point, it will always point to an active copy of the article, which is useful. And these are registered with a site called crossref.org. And crossref uh, actually provides a very uh, useful um, function in that they have a, a bibtech exporter. So I've made this little function in my bash RC that uh, creates a blank line on either side of this. But the main thing it does is it uses curl to use the crossref.org's API to grab that particular DOI and transform it into a bibtech output. And then it, it uh, sends all that to this bib.bib file. So to show that in practice, if I do DOI to bib and then I paste in the uh, the DOI from that article, so I can grab it right here and I paste it in like that, and then it'll create this bib.bib file here that uh, has a bibtech reference to the article with its author, title, journal. Uh, volume, number, pages, and all, all that useful information. So I can do this for the rest of these articles. The uh, PDF info lists metadata uh, of each article, but it doesn't always list uh, the DOI, so unfortunately. Uh, you could just open up the PDF itself, and often it's uh, displayed within the PDF. Uh, for instance, if I open up this PDF, uh, let me see if I can uh, make it visible. Open up this PDF, then there'll often be a DOI uh, somewhere in the article, like right here. And then I could just copy that and uh, use that as a uh, as as my DOI. Um, however, I don't have to open up all these articles, so one quicker way to do it. Um, which isn't perfect, but it can grab a lot of DOIs quickly, is to say for file in all of these PDF files, I want to convert the file to text with PDF to text and send it to STD out, and then search for 
case insensitive uh, DOI. Syntax error for file in PDF, PDF to text file dash. Oh, I forgot to type do right here. So uh, <clears throat> that will show me all the places that DOI pops up in these files. Now, some of these files will have like a table of contents in them that list a bunch of other, their own citations to other papers. Those often also have DOIs. So this can be, this list can be overly exhaustive, which, uh, you know, isn't perfect. But if you can get a list of DOIs, then you can uh, get the job done. So I'm just going to copy some of these and uh, use my command to kind of grab the data from them. And I think there's a couple more here. Okay, and then I'm going to look inside my bib.bib. So it got the article from Cho, from Evans, from Gillen. Um, I don't think this is one of the articles that I had listed. Um, yeah, I don't see mower anywhere in my article, so I think that's probably it extended reference. So I'm going to delete this one. I don't really need it. And then Heinrich and Skodan, although they listed it as Lace Skodan, I'm just going to delete this part so that it's consistent with how my PDF file is uh, listed. So now I have one, two, three, four, five. So, so uh, I could just do uh, said, use said to uh, print all the lines that have Oops, that have a uh, article listed. So uh, it got these five, uh, but I'm missing Breslin. So it got Cho, Evans, Gillen, Heinrich, and Skodan, but it's missing Breslin. And uh, the reason for that is that not all articles have a digital object identifier, um, unfortunately. So, but any article that's listed on PubMed will have something called a PubMed. ID. Um, so wherever I, wherever you found the article, it will have a PubMed ID, and uh, I happen to uh, have the PubMed ID for this uh, article here. So if I open this up, this is the uh, article, and the PubMed ID is just the number on the end of the link, or it's listed uh, below the article as well. So if you have this PubMed ID, you can actually query uh, PubMed to send you an XML version of the article's uh, citation. Now, PubMed, unlike crossref.org, does not uh, export to BibTeX, unfortunately. So you have to do that conversion on your own. So to do that, I use uh, a package called uh, BibUtils. Should be uh, in Pac-Man. Have my password wrong. Uh, it might be in the AUR. Yeah, so it's in the AUR called uh, BibUtils, and it's kind of these bibliography conversion tools, and it provides a set of different tools that can convert between different types of citation files. So it can convert a PubMed. XML into a uh, BibTeX file. So to demonstrate that, I'll show you the function that I made. Um, I have a PubMed to BibTeX function that uh, uses curl to query PubMed and to grab that particular ID, but to uh, send the report back as an XML file and uh, unfortunately the XML file it sends back 
despite what kind of format you use, I haven't found a format that works. It uh, sends back the greater than and escape than characters of the XML file as uh, escaped uh, HTML encoding. So I have to change all these and greater thans to greater than and ion less thans to less thans. But after that, it is a valid XML file. And so I pipe that into one of these bibutil programs that converts a PubMed XML into a standard XML. And then I convert that standard XML into a bibtech. And these are just some uh, flags that make it work. This uh, NB removes a, a, a blank uh, marking character. And this dash B uses brackets instead of quotes. So uh, if I look one more time at my PubMed ID right here and I use this function so 112587776 then you can see that med to XML and XML to bib process the reference and if I go back into my bib.bib at the bottom it should have uh, Breslin right here so it grabbed uh, Breslin and all its, its information so uh, it's a good way to um, grab both DOI and PubMed ID PDF's uh, citation information. So what's the point? Now that I have this bib.bib file, I can uh, use that to make Pandoc references. So for example, if I make a markdown file called test.md and I, uh, let's say I title it my awesome paper, an author and just title this example and I'll say I would like to cite these sources and I'm using the uh, there's a plugin called vim-pandoc that uh, allows you to use bibliography files like that one to autocomplete this as well so you can see it autocompletes the different entries found in my bibtech file and I can cite uh, different authors with auto-completion and it even uh, since my terminal is so big right now it kind of cuts off but usually I can see a short description of the title of that uh, article as well and uh, I can put it like this I would like to cite these sources and at the end I just put a header that says literature cited because it's going to put all my uh, lit cited at the bottom of the file. So once that's done, uh, I can either go back to the bash command line and run pandoc, and I just have to supply that bib.bib file as a bibliography uh, flag to pandoc, or then pandoc will do that for me if I just type colon pandoc like this, and it tells me at the bottom that vim pandoc ran successfully. And, uh, oops, I have to uh, tell it that I want it to output to a PDF, actually. So I'm going to pandoc PDF. And it tells me that it ran successfully. And so now, if I uh, open that PDF file, then uh, you can see here that it made uh, my awesome paper, my name, example, I would like to cite, cite these sources, and that it input these uh, citations and then under my literature cited section it has the uh, true citations in their format. You can also make Pandoc use specific uh, citation rules so that it changes the way it displays either these citations, the format uh, that it displays these citations in or these uh, in inline citations and maybe we can talk about that in another episode but I thought this was just so useful and cool that I would share it, and it's a good way to write papers. You could even write a paper with, uh, you know, Git version control or something like that to update as you go along, and uh, you never have to jump into a GUI environment except perhaps to view a PDF to grab a, a DOI or a PMID, and of course you're probably doing your lit search on PubMed, which is going to have to have a graphical environment. But once you have those papers and IDs. The rest of the paper writing can all be done on the command line. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed that. 
And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.